Hello my dear Alleyholics! This unboxing video is going to be my last unboxing video with the unboxing portion shown for all of the products. Before I start showing the products, I'm going to do what any normal person would do when given bubble wrap. Let me expand on the decision. Based on the survey we had on the community tab last month, most people have voted that the unboxing part is unnecessary. So starting with the next video, unboxing is going to be shown only for select products, for example if they are very nicely packed, or if the product is super interesting and I want to create some suspense. The first product today is shipped with AliExpress combined shipping method, which to be honest I don't like very much. In rare cases when the wrong item is shipped it makes it hard to figure out which one it is, like in cases where many products are on the way, and this whole thing just makes the dispute a little more challenging. Box number 1 has a case for my Galaxy Note 8. The case is really nicely made, it covers the whole phone, not just the back part, which is good for someone like me who drops their phone quite often. The surface is smooth and the magnets are strong enough to keep the case on the phone safely. The touchscreen works fine with the case on, I, and I didn't have any problems navigating or moving the app icons. And the plastic doesn't get in the way of the camera when taking pictures and videos. The next item came in multiple layers of plastic wrap and with a foam layer. It took me some time to get through it, but after a brief 1v1 it was finally out. This is a tire deflator with a digital pressure gauge. The screen has readings in PSI, KPA, bars and something else. The display has a backlight for super bright or super dark days. I bought it because my new to me car has bigger tires which would take a while to deflate for off-roading with just pinching the core. The way it works is, you screw it on the tube nipple, unscrew the nipple core and move the core away so the air can freely exit the tire. When the desired pressure level is reached, you move this thing back and remove the cage. The next item are these self-heating socks. I wasn't sure what they are and I decided to check what they are all about. They are basically just regular normal socks, but on the bottom they have these silicone patterns, which are, from what I understand, are supposed to work in a way similar to reflexology, massaging certain parts of the foot, thus encouraging the blood flow. Based on the stitching, I thought that these points are supposed to be on the inside, directly in the contact with the foot. But of course, the theory whether they work needed to be tested, so I have put them on and walked around the house for a good 15 minutes. And I walked and walked and I realized they don't really provide any additional warmth other than regular socks, but I did notice that I had some little indentations on my feet, so the reflexology therapeutic part might be true. And while we're on the topic of massage, here is another product. I am a little over 30 and apparently this comes with constant lower back pain. After figuratively breaking my back at work, I have realized that stretching really helps. And a massage peanut such as this one is very helpful in getting those nasty muscle knots loose. It's made out of what looks like regular styrofoam, but in reality it is much harder than it looked and almost impossible for me to dent with my hand strength. The shape is not an accident, it's supposed to be much better for your spine than a foam roller which I've used before. And because unlike the foam roller, it's not putting any pressure on the spinal bone and focuses the pressure on the spinal cord instead. The next product today is a 4K dash cam from 70Mi. I decided it was finally the time to get a proper adult dash camera with good quality and I have heard a lot of good things about this one. The quality didn't disappoint. Right out of the box it was pretty clear that the build of the camera is pretty good, the plastic didn't seem cheap at all, and it came with all the required accessories. The angle adjustment free play is about 45 degrees. The camera doesn't have a touch screen and instead is controlled with these four buttons. On the side there are ports for power, rear dash cam and a micro SD card. It comes with a super long power cable which was more than enough to wire it inside my girlfriend's Mini Cooper. It also came with two sticky pads and a USB power adapter. Here is a quick demo of the quality in the rain and in the evening. The quality makes it possible to read the license plate of the cars in front of you and it's clear enough to see them when the car is moving. And you can very clearly see the license plate of the car in front of you when the car comes to a full stop. When reviewing the footage I didn't see any issues with it readjusting the brightness coming into and out of dark tunnels. 
I liked it enough to invest an additional $30 into the rear camera. The quality isn't as good as on the front, it's only 1080p and it's not as easy to read the license plate numbers, especially considering that it's meant to be placed on the inside of your car. But it's definitely good enough to prove your innocence if someone rear ends you. And here is a bonus footage of me walking my dog in my cute pink fuzzy pants. The next item is a cooling t-shirt from Xiaomi. I've read about cooling active wear before, supposedly the material enhances natural evaporation of your skin and makes you feel less sweaty and hot on summer days. I've had some time to wear it during the irregularly hot September days last year, and while it seemed a little better than wearing regular cotton or silk shirts, I wouldn't spend more money on buying this type of shirt, and I would stick to regular ones. Besides the fact that it's subpar in its primary function, it is otherwise a pretty nice t-shirt made with high-end material and a good fit for my torso shape. I also bought a sticker for my car, because what's the point of having an off-road capable vehicle if you don't slap some stickers on it, right? Anyway, I wanted to show the before and after and the application process. It's not a regular sticker which is directly transferable. Instead, you have to apply the sticker with the film first onto the surface, the lift gate in my case, and then remove the film that is attached to it. I have used a plastic card to make sure there are no bubbles. I gotta say, I wasn't completely sold on the final result at first, but then it has grown on me. Plus, it makes my car much easier to recognize now.